Hi, welcome to the Intrastat lecture series uh, in the unit of a testing hypothesis. This is our lecture number six. We talk about the standard deviation as a variant normal model. Our video number one, we get a, a introduction about you know, how do we define what we call the is the Z scores, right? So we said Z score, the key things to remember, Z score is to tell you the distance you know, from the mean, right? So like if Z score is like 1.3, that means you are 1.3 standard deviation away from the mean. If you got a positive Z score, that means you are above the mean. Right. If you are negative Z score, you are below the means here. Okay. So today we want to take a look at very special models and what is the Z scores means here. Okay. Let's go ahead. And go to our lecture notes. Okay. So this is where we stopped last time. Okay. So now let's see here. You know. So. Uh, this is what we call is the normal model and the 68, 95, 99 percent rule. So what is the normal models here? Okay, so normal model, and uh, so this is the one we call it, you can say is a normal distribution. Or some people say this is a uh, Bayer curve. Yeah, because the, you know, when you plot it, it's kind of the upside down bear, right? So called the bear curve. And some people say it's a Gaussian. Gaussian curve is because of this, uh, you know, statistician Gaussian, you know, find it, so we call it the Gaussian curves here. So what does this curve mean? That means, you know, in your real life, right? So a lot of the data, you know, if you plot them, they basically, they will have this type of the shape, this bare shape here. So for example, if you say the, hey, what is the, you know, the average income for the certain city? So if you collect like thousand, like maybe two thousand family, and then you put a make a histogram, so probably you will get something like in here, right? So that's probably will be your histogram looks like. So for example, majority of the people, so majority of the people will be around maybe sixty thousand a year. Right, so that's what the majority of the people here, then some of the family, they make a lot of money here, and some of the family, they don't make that much money here, right? So that's why if you put a curve layer, so it's kind of like a, a normal curve. And uh, believe or not, in our real life, we have a lot of the data, you know, satisfy this uh, natural kind of the curve looking, we call it a normal curves here, all right? So also like in here, we have a, we call this the normal curve uh, and we have a quick way to, you know, the, this is what we call it 68, 95, 99% rule. So that means, uh, what's that means? That means uh, if this data is from a normal curve. So for a normal curve, they have this good characteristics here. Okay, so if I put the means here with zeros here. Okay, so the we talk about so the, the you can treat this as a z score or it's a mean doesn't matter right so if this is a z score because you can simplify you know standardize everything right so the z score x bar or mu go to zero so this is the one sigma this is a two sigma this is a three sigma, right? So it's one standard deviation above the mean, two standard deviation above the mean. Or you can get a below the mean. So it's a negative one sigma, negative two sigma, and a negative three sigma here. Okay, so if your data satisfy this, that means in here, so the first thing here is between the one sigma, that means, you know, majority, like we said, majority of the people going to be between the 
one plus or minus one sigma. So that will be in this area. And uh, what is the percent of the people in this area? We say, hey, I have a 68%, okay? So that means that from here to here is a 68%, right? So if I, so that means that from the plus one sigma to the minus one sigma is uh, 68. Now, what is 95? The 95, that means uh, in here between the two sigma levels here. And uh, let me try to get a, a different colors here. Okay, so here, so the green here, right? So this is the green. That's why it's covered on yellow. That's why I want to use the yellow. Okay, so, okay, so that means that this is what is a percent? 95%. So let me try to write down here. So from here to here, and this is my green. That means how, what is the percent of the data should be the green ones here is 95%, right? The whole green area is 95%. And now the three sigma, the negative three sigma. So let's take a look what is here. That means from this area, oh, wow, they covered the, where is that? So all these are purples, right? So it doesn't look like a purple in the middle, but it, you know it's a purple, right? Okay, so all this purple, it tell you is what? It's tell you is 99.7%. That means you only have about 0.3% is not in here, right? So that means from here to here, right? So that's from the, positive three sigma to the negative three sigma, what is the percentage I have? I have 99.7% here, all right? That means the whole population probably will be under this curve. Of course, you still have a little tail areas here, right? You still have a little tail areas here, tail areas here, but those tail areas very small, right? Because you know, almost ninety nine point seven should what should be covered by this curve, and then the normal distribution have this character, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at this one here. So this one is say uh, estimate the mean and the standard deviation of this normal curve here. Oh, all right, so mean, I know the mean. Mean is what, the center here, right? Dun, 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 dun. So mean is 10. Now I know the whole curve should cover 99.7. So I'm pretty sure, you know, like from here to here, from here to here, like if you put a line here, put a line here. So it's probably is what? It's covered the whole things, right? Yeah, you still have a little, like a little a tail area here, tail area here, but they are very small here, right? So I know in here, this is u, mu is equal to what? 10. Then, like we said, from here to here, probably is the three what? Three sigma levels, right? Because the three sigma level and this is a negative three sigma level because the three sigma is covered of almost the whole curve see here. So I know by, by starting, this is 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So how many distance is 16 minus 10? And there's how many sigmas here? It's three sigmas here, right? So what is here? So it's a six over three. So what is that? This is my sigma. So I know for this distributions, right? So my center mu is 10. Then the sigma here is what? It's a two, right? So that's why you can divide it as one sigma, two sigma, three sigma, basically cover the whole curves, right? Okay, if you still have a kind of the confused, so let's take a look at this example, I think, uh, and after this one, you should be able to get it. All right, 
So let's say that in here we set up the distribution of uh, weights of nine ounce bags of a particular brand of potato chips is a normal distribution with the mean. Okay, so let's try to highlight the information we have with mean equal to the 9.12 and the sigma is equal to the 0.05. Okay, so they want us to find, so if I randomly pick the one brand, what is the weight of going to be on the middle 68%, okay? Okay, so what is the weight, right? So here, okay, let's do this. We say, okay, they tell us the potato chips and uh, the weight, the mean here is what? The mean here is 9 point what? 9.12, so correct? So 9.12. So we want to find the 68%, right? So remember here, this is the 68%. So by the 60, so this is the 68%, right? So this is the 68%. So by the normal rules, if this is the 60, so how many sigma I'm adding? Ah, this one will be what? One sigma above, this is one sigma what? Below. So this one here will just be the one sigma away from the mean. So it's 9.12 plus one sigma, one sigma is 0.05. So this will be 9.17, correct? Okay, so this is 9.17. Then this one's here will be the 9.12 minus 0.05. So what is here? This is 9.07. So I know my weight going to be 9.07 and to what? 9.17. So what's that mean? That means, you know, when you go to buy one bag of these potato chips, if you really go to weight it, I don't know the how do you weight, you know, you go, you really weight it. So 68% of the chance you will get a weight between these two. So probably your bag will be 9.11 or 9.09. .09. So, but 98% uh, of the bag, I'm sorry, 68% of the bags of you're going to what between these two weight, all right? Okay, so now the next one's here. Let's take a look at this one. The this one's here, the second one's here, the problem they ask you say, hey, it's still my means here, right? It's 9.12. So they ask you, they say, hey, what is the percent is less than 9.02? Okay, okay, so you say, okay, let me draw it. So this is 9.02, right? So what are they looking for? Let's say they want to find the percent is less than, right? So less than 9.02. So they want to find this tail area, correct? 9.02, right? Okay, so you say, mm, let's see, what do I do that? So 9.02, is how many sigma away? 9.02, this is uh, 9.02 is equal to 9.12 minus two times 0.05, right? So the 2.05 is the sigma. So I know this, now here, this is two times, right? So, that means what? This is a two sigma, two standard deviation below, right? All right, so this is a two standard deviation. So I know for the two standard deviation, based on my rule, this is a sigma, this is a negative two sigmas, right? So here, so I know the two standard deviations here, what is the area here? The area here is what? The area here is 95, right? 95%. So if it's 95%, what is those remaining tail? 
because the everything should add up to 100%, right? So the remaining tail is what is 0.05. Now you are looking for half of this. So what is this area? It will be 0.05 divided by two. So this is 0.025. So the percent here is 2.5%, right? So below this 9.02. So what's that mean? That means today if it is your unlucky day, you, you go to buy a potato chips, a bag of potato chips, and then you waited, oh, you got like what? You got like 8.9 ounces here. What is the chance you will do that? It's 2.5%, right? So it's only very small portion, you know, will be below the 9.02. You get that? Okay. Now let's take a look a few more. We're going to have a lot of those type of the problems here. Let's see here. Let's, let me give a little bit more space. So it will be easier for us to do the calculation. Okay, now the next thing here is like we said, okay, what is the, okay. So let's say, what is the, let me see here, where is that go? Okay, so what percent, okay, of the nine ounce bag will between 8.97 and 9.17? Okay, so let's take a look here, right? Okay, so 9.17, Okay, so here, all right, okay. Okay, so this is the middle, is a 9.12. Okay, so between here, this is 9.17. Okay, so let's take a look from here to here, 9.12 to 9.17, how many sigma? One sigma. Right? Okay, good. Okay, now between 9.12 and 8.97. Okay, so how many, uh, how many sigma levels between here? So this is a 0.15, so how many? three sigma, okay? So I'm looking for, they say, what is the chance you are between these two? That means I'm looking for this area, correct? Between these two. Okay, now this is my yellow area. So I know this area, okay? So I know this area, correct? This green one. What is this green one here? Because the, this is one sigma, we know plus minus one sigma, 68%. So what is this green areas here? It's 68% divided by two. So this is 34%, right? So it's a 0.34. And then also, from here to here, right? So this percent, so this is how many sigmas here? It's a three sigma. So if it's a three sigma, it's 99.7, correct? Okay, so it's a 99.7. So now what is this green areas here? It will just be 99.7% divided by two, see here, right? So you have a 0.997. So you have 0.997 divided by two. So this one see here will give you 0.4985. So the area between will just be the 0.4985 plus a point of three fourths, right? You just add look, this one and this one, that's come to the area you have. Okay, so what do we come out with? It's A3, A5. Okay, so when we try to do the problem in this section, the best is to try to graph, right? Okay, so now let's take a look. Last one, let's say, 
a bag weighed nine point o seven ounces. What the percentile is the distribution in these distributions here? Okay, graph it. Okay, so this is nine point one two. All right, so where is nine point o seven? Oh, here, ha ha. Nine point o seven. Okay, so the this is a nine point o seven. Okay. Now nine point o seven to nine point one two, how many sigmas here? Half is one sigma here, right? So I know plus or minus one sigma. So I know this area because it's a plus or minus one sigma is sixty eight percent. So half of it. What is this one here? This is thirty four percent, right? So the percentile, that means we want to look which one we're looking for. We are looking for this tail will give me the percentile because that means how many percent were below this, right? So how do I get this green area? Because this is in the middle, right? So the, the whole thing is one. So at the middle, so this one is a half. So will be the point of five minus 0.34. So what is here? 0.16 here. So how do we conclude? That means we said 9.07 is the what? 16th percentile. So when the percentile, that means 16% that means of the bag going to be less than 9.07. So like for examples here, just to make sure we understand that, right? So if in here, right? So for example, if, so like, uh, you know, like uh, in here, if you find, uh, if you find uh, this area, okay, so let's assume if you find uh, this area is a 0.15, if it is a 0.15, that means this area is what? This area is a point of what? A5, right? Then we can say this point here, this is the 85th percentile. Okay, so make sure you understand the terminologies uh, Right, so this is the introduction about the normal distributions, right? And the key things here is this is 68, 95, 99.7. And the key to do this type of the problem, what is the key? Graph, right? So you graph it, then you mark it to see which one is the area you're looking for. And then you will not get confused. So make sure you graph, you mark your center, and then shade the area the problem asks you. All right? Okay, so that's it. And uh, then this is our second video. So the next video, we're going to show you some technology, how to find. So in here you say, oh, my Z score is good at one, two, three, or negative one, negative two, negative three. I can find those, uh, you know, the area of probability. How about if you give me a Z score 1.2? So how do I know what is the chance, you know, below the 1.2, above the 1.2? What do I need to do to find it? Right, just like when we talk about it, now, this is related to the when we did a population proportion. You got a Z test, right? So it's called is a Z test. Basically, what is that Z test? Ah, now I try to find it. it's the Z score. Right? All right. So now, because of that, then because if you give me a Z score, then I can find the p value. So now in here. You know, the next topics here, we're going to say, if you give me any Z score instead of the one, two or three, and how do I find the, the, the how do I find the area or the probabilities from that? So we're going to, I'm going to show you how to use the TI-84, how to write a simple R code, or how to just look up at the table, all right? So you have a 
like the paper table and you can look it up and you can find it. Okay, then the, so of course, if you can use technology and so it'll be a lot easier and also it's more accurate. Okay, that's it. Have a good day. And uh, so let's talk about uh, in the next video, how to use the R or TI-84 calculator to help you to find the lost area. All right, that's it. Okay, talk to you later, all right, bye.